All right, um, we are now live. For you guys who don't know who I am, my name is Dan. This is my channel, Book Nook Noggin. And we have with us a most important guest, Max Booth the Third. Thank you for coming on and agreeing to be interviewed by me. I really do appreciate this. Hey, thanks for uh, inviting me. This is uh, exciting. Hell yeah. Yeah, I, I want to tell you how I first got introduced to you. Um, I first heard your uh, your podcast ghoulish <laughs> with the episode of Nightworms with Sadie Hartman. Yeah. That was a re I know you had her on your show like a number of times. Um but that one was really it really resonated with me and I was like I really like this guy. I found out you were an author. I decided to go check out your books. And now you're you're so versatile, man. You wear so many different hats. Like you you you're just doing amazing things and i'm it's like i'm sure you have many more things to come oh thank you um yeah sadie is a, a fun guest i whenever she's on the show we we seem to have a good energy together and you know she does a lot of great things too in the, the whole genre yeah i i like you did like three episodes with her didn't you i i think so two or three yeah. Yeah, they were really fun episodes. I like the. I went way back and I like uh, listened to all the earlier, the earlier episodes and like the first episode you did with her, which I think was about Bookstagram. Yeah. I really liked that one. She had a lot of important things to say about the horror community and and you know being a part of a community. Yeah, that was when we first began talking. I think we feel we feel that we hadn't really talked much, and I just reached out mostly. Because I was always confused at how like Instagram people took such great photographs of books. Right. I was always I was like, how do you take photos of books with such clean backgrounds? And it turns out, at least in Sadie's case, she has like palettes. Like you would like if you if people stocked a grocery store, but like walked into a grocery store and they were being stocked, you would see all the groceries like on a big wooden palette and she okay, has I didn't know that's what she was doing yeah she has those and she just paints them once in a while to make it look different so oh, that's the, cool. that's the uh, instagram secret that she told me in that episode well i want to congratulate you on the 100th episode man that was i got i got to ask you about this one you got fucking john lovitz on there I did, but I'm. I mean, it wasn't like I'm. I'm pal John Lovitz. Uh, do you know the website Cameo? No, I'm not familiar. with Okay, that. so there's a website called Cameo. Will like celebrities who will no longer like doing so well these days. Yeah. They will uh, sign up, and anyone could like pay them the fee they want, and they will make like a like a one minute video saying anything they want. <laughs> It's, oh, it's, okay. <laughs> it's mostly used like, oh, my friend loves this person. I'm gonna pay them to do like happy birthday. But right. I got. Oh, because you said like I said the pod that he listens to the show, and I was like, does he really listen to Polish? <laughs> like that would be cool. <laughs> yeah. No. And uh, I I got incredibly drunk one day, and I thought it would be really funny if I if I had a cameo of John Lovitz of all people. And, right. My wife was like, why him? I'm like, because it's funny that you have to ask me why him. That's the whole point. <laughs> that's why it's that's why. Because you have to ask me that. And and then the next day I, I saw that he had approved it and I was like, Oh man, this was a mistake. But I re I regret nothing now. Well, every time I, I see John Lovitz, I always like place him to the, the wedding singer when he's singing <laughs> Ladies Night. <laughs> yeah. I love I I honestly, like, no joke, love John Levitz. I think he's incredibly funny. But, well, that's pretty damn cool. Yeah. You got him to do that, though. I mean, I shit. beat the I beat the system too because, like, for a like, personal video, like a happy birthday or a, hey, good job in the promotion, he was charging only uh one fifty. But there was a second option for like companies and brands if they want to yeah. use them. It was like two thousand, and I was like, "I'm not Ooh, doing shit. that." So I just <laughs> did the one fifty, despite the fact that this was clearly for a promotion of a brand, and no right. one said anything. I, I, I well, that's pretty. Them. It's still pretty damn cool, man. Yeah. 
I gotta ask you, did did you write the scripts for for that episode, or did everybody that contributed do their own? So yeah, there was no script um, beyond like what I told John Levitz to say. Uh, everybody else who sent in the video, what I told them was, "Hey, I'm doing a, the hundredth episode of Ghoulish. Uh, in it, I am killed by a by a poison egg." The idea is a previous guest might have done this. We want right. you to send in a eulogy. Uh, feel free to talk as much shit about me as you want. And that was the only prompt I gave. Really? Because it seemed pretty well coordinated. Like a lot of them seemed to like coincide and it really made like an interesting <laughs> story. Yeah. I was like, I thought you scripted the whole thing. And like, <laughs> <laughs> well, after it came out, I mean, after I got them all, I'd spent a lot of time like editing them and like, trying to decide the best uh the best old old for the clips to come in and after i decided uh, on that i came up with like little notes to tell uh, andrew who did who did the guest hosting and that i came up with notes for him to read like okay maybe it would be good if you said this at this time to tie in to this previous clip and yeah it, you know, the funny thing about this episode is i sent like a mass email to the previous guests and within like five minutes uh <laughs> cynthia paleo sent in a clip that was just talking so much shit about me and i thought there's, I, no, hers way, was funny. <laughs> there's no way you've had time <laughs> to record this it's like you already <laughs> had this made and i have to wonder how many of these people had these made already just in case i did die <laughs> <sighs> but it was great it was a great Great, yeah. great uh, 100th episode, yeah. Thank you. I, I, I really love the comedic elements of it. And then, like, the ending. I was only, like, it would have been nice if it would have coincided with Easter, but that probably would have pissed off a lot of people because then we could be like, he is risen! <laughs> yeah, I could have I could have taken a, a Christ route. I, <laughs> I don't think I know enough about Christ to, to, to do that. I know a lot right, of the right. rules. And, you know, the whole thing about being uh, revived by reading a how to revive a goldfish uh, uh wiki how that was decided like two seconds before we uh, began recording the episode really we, because we still didn't know how to reanimate me we knew he would reanimate me but i couldn't figure out like what would be the best way so i googled how to reanimate somebody and what came up was how to revive a goldfish so i said just read this this is good and right. like those like noises of me splashing in the tub yeah. and all, all that was was me taking like my yeti and just doing this to the microphone <laughs> oh okay yeah like the cassette thing was that like something where you actually physically putting a cassette into a tape deck no or was it i found a, a pre-saved audio clip uh, online of that noise and oh, i just okay. did some editing and put it in yeah no, is Andrew? Is he the guy that was in the um? Oh, what was that guy? You did the 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 promo, the live stream for uh, Jurassic Christ. Was it was Andrew the guy who was the Paw Patrol guy? Yeah, he's the Paw Patrol. Rival. Okay, okay, I thought cop, so, but I wasn't stash. sure. Yeah, yes, he's a he's yes. a good friend of mine. He lives uh, close by. We 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 socialize. Yeah, he 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 did that really well. I I really enjoyed that. Was Him so and I fun. have. Him and I have done a lot of like live performances in Texas, and I think we both uh, enjoy like doing stuff on a stage, especially comedic stuff. Right. So I, I knew he was like the perfect person to have host the episode. Yeah, he he did a really good job. Okay, um, let's get on with talking about some books. I I actually did find my copy. Oh way over here i thought my kid had stolen it on me <laughs> but i found it <laughs> did your kids steal things often um sometimes books come up missing yeah and like he'll be like i don't know where it is well dude it was on the desk and now it's gone and you're always in there so <laughs> what are you what are you gonna do about that i don't know what am i gonna do because i don't know where these books i searched this house all over the place couldn't find them military school <laughs> <laughs> right yeah but you've got a film i know that you, you're limited on what you can say about the upcoming film yeah um it's been released in the southeast of the u.s currently is there a trailer out for it yet not yet but hopefully soon so it's premiered it, it did a premiere in tribeca at brooklyn 
It had yeah, I wanted a, to see that. I guess yeah. there were links where you could have watched it, right? Yeah, they had an at home edition where you paid like twenty bucks. <laughs> Ridiculous. What? And if I would have known, I would have watched it. I uh, save save money t- until it comes out officially. Then I will also get money. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, um, it cut co- it premiered at Tribeca. It was like a one time thing, obviously. It then premiered in Dallas at, uh, at a place called the Texas Theater, which is where uh, Lee Hilvey Oswald got arrested. And now it's going to have a, uh, a Southeast premiere in um, uh, August, I think, at some festival called popcorn frights i don't know nobody told me about this until the, the, the fest tagged me on twiddle <laughs> no one tells yeah, me I, anything. I thought i saw you tagged it <laughs> that it was like a last minute thing like they didn't even tell you about it the director didn't even know until <laughs> but uh <laughs> but the, the thing is at this point we have ifc uh handling the movie and doing distribution so like they oh, okay so they'll send it out to like festivals without telling us which is not like so, so something i'm complaining about it's just there's no reason really to bad us about it at this point uh yeah and then ifc is going to release it on label day weekend september 3rd it's going to come out in limited theaters i don't know which cities yet but i think 15 to 20 cities possibly to begin with and like if it builds a buzz they will increase that but at the same time they will also release it on uh paid video on demand so you can rent yeah, it i was just gonna like ask itunes you, amazon because in case you don't live in the city where it's gonna be. right yeah and yeah. i do i uh i don't i do know a physical media type of thing is in uh the wilkes but i don't know yet if it's going to come out the same time as it comes out on video on demand i don't know who's doing the, the disc just yet but i i mean it, it should be happening because on monday i'm going to be recording a a dvd commentary for it so yeah that's pretty it's gonna happen cool, <laughs> yeah you've already watched the entire film already right <sighs> fell too many times <laughs> Do, is it what you envisioned or yeah, it is. But like, I was also on set the whole the whole time we were filming the movie. Okay, and I was also in the editing room for a good chunk of the movie. Oh, nice. So, the movies. I mean, I've seen the movie in bits and pieces and in its entire entirety, like a lot of times. Uh, like some, you always hear cases of like Reynolds. They uh, they they sell the movie rights and <laughs> they're not involved at all and and they don't they don't see it until it hits the olds. Yeah, that's but, why I was wondering because I wasn't sure how much of the process did you have because I mean it's your story, man. I mean I'm wondering yeah. how much they would give you control of to you know to make it real. You know, I had a ton of uh, input on pretty much everything. Uh, and I don't. I think it's a combination of a. It's a really small indie company that produced the movie and put it out. Mailerman and, or Mailerman? I'm not sure. It, yeah. That. So it's uh, it's two. It's three companies that kind of like got together to make the movie. So they'll spin a black yarn, which is a uh, Ryan Lewis and Josh Mailerman's company. There's a uh, Hans Motion Pictures. Hans is the company that financed the movie completely. Okay. And those Atlas Industries, which is pretty much the main production company that m- made the movie possible, because the uh, the, c- the the co-founder of Atlas is uh, Sean King O'Grady, who also directed the movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, and Atlas they have a soundstage in uh, Detroit, which is where we filmed the movie because they produce many movies. So they already had the soundstage. They had they own the cameras and most of the equipment. And uh, what we did was we built a bathroom on the soundstage itself, and then we shot it in this big kind of garage of an office building with a bathroom built into it and a parking lot in um, Michigan okay. and like right next to it was like a Hampton Inn where the cast and crew all stayed and like every day we would leave the hotel and just walk across the parking lot to the film set um, but anyway yeah so I think it was a combo of like working with small independent people who have not been completely corrupt by Hollywood and uh, also um, 
in addition to writing the scripts, I am also an executive producer on the film. Oh, nice. So, so I think maybe that gave me a lot more uh, input than what I would have gotten if I was just the screenwriter. Now, I know you've, you've done so many interviews, and I, I've listened to like almost every interview you've done. And, rank them. You know, it's going to be a little redundant with some Rank, questions rank the interviews. Rank the interviews. Oh, yeah, man, I know you're on Deadhead Space, you're on Ink Heist, but I don't know which one I like more. You know? uh, Deadhead Space was the real stem chill. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I wanted to. <laughs> you originally wrote we need to do something as, as a screenplay, like that was your intentions with it originally. Yeah. So um. Yeah, I mean that's how long ago did you write it? I didn't look at the copyright. Yeah, so I wrote the screenplay originally in 2019, and that happened because I had lunch with a friend who used to write now builds a uh, Shane McKenzie. He he was in like the extreme hill scene. He wrote a bunch of books for like a head and whatnot, and Deadite Press. But uh, then he got some luck in screenwriting, and he was like. Fuck this! So so much more money in screenwriting, and he hasn't looked back. But he really? lives locally, and uh, yeah, like he just wrote something for uh, Blumhouse and Amazon. I mean, he's he, he's making it. So I had Was lunch that with one him. Of those movies that they rolled out this past year. Um, yeah, like those, I forget the name now, but it's like an anthology series. Feel like it goes to Amazon, but it's co-produced by Blumhouse. And it's like a, it's like a, it's like a entire movie, but they're doing it almost like a master to full series. Yeah, I haven't watched any of them, but I, I'm aware of them. His movie, I believe, comes out in October. It's called um, 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 um oh fuck, I'm blinking on the name. A uh, bingo. It's called Bingo. Okay. Yeah, I'm excited to see it. That's like his big breakout. He's written a few other things, but I think this is going to really send him places. So I had lunch with him in 2019, and he was like, dude, you got to begin writing scripts because some of these indie companies, they all hungry for scripts, and they don't have anything. And I was like, okay, I'll try something. I, be, I even have an idea of a, of a movie that could take place only in a bathroom. He kind of looked at me like I was crazy. And I went home. I began writing it. I finished it, I think, in July. Yeah, I finished it in July. And I sent it to him, and he sent it to this company I won't name now that he said would take a look at it. And then they did not respond. And I got impatient, and I said, you know what? I'm not made for screenwriting. I'm just going to rewrite this as a novel, a little novella, and see what happens. Because by then, I had I let the project sit so long I had develop, developed many new ideas of how to improve it because the original script is not that great in retrospect. So I rewrote it as a novella and I sat on it again because I thought, oh, I could send this to some agents maybe. I don't know what to right. do with it. But unfortunately, novellas are really difficult to sell any place because most agents want a novel that's at least right. like 60 70 thousand worlds and this was like 35 thousand worlds so i couldn't really do much with it so i sat around with it for a while and then um covid happened and i was working a night shift at a hotel and many of my co vocals <laughs> let go and i thought oh am i also gonna get filed any day now right, right. and i kind of i got nervous because i was living paycheck to paycheck so i thought I'm just going to put a book out and see if I can make some extra cash. And I did zero pre-promotion. I just, it was like a Saturday night and I, I got the idea because the, the weather outside was awful. We were like on tornado watch at the time. And I thought it would be a really funny idea, mostly just to me if I release this book right now, because that's, that's not how you release a book. You don't put a book out on a Saturday night without telling anyone ahead of time. Right. And I did, and somehow it's become my, it, it became like my best-selling book, and that was even before the movie stuff happened. I don't really? know. Yeah, I don't know. Even more so <laughs> than the other books, more than I, I got to throw in this joke. I, 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 touch yourself at night. <laughs> touch yourself at night. You can touch yourself any time of day if no one's looking. But you know, th this one it sold more than this one. Honestly, I don't know to be honest because. Um, 
I only did the papal back of that book. Not I, I, I gotta say, I prefer yeah. this cover over the other one. Thank you. I, I, I like both. Yeah. I like that when one. I, when though. I saw the two different versions, I was like, I want that one. Yeah, I don't know how many copies the uh, Cemetery Dance ebook in Hildback had sold because I haven't gotten a royalty statement yet. They I might need to look. Paid you yet? No, I've gotten. I got paid up. Oh, friends. okay. I got okay. paid a friend, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, I just haven't gotten a statement yet. But it also hasn't been like that long, so I'm, I'm right. not like, oh fuck, Cemetery Dance. It's just, it, it's just, it came out last year. I'm not too concerned. Right, right. Yeah, but also fuck Cemetery Dance, right? <laughs> no, I, I love them. I love those guys. I, and I think I saw you tweet about this one. I think you said this one was your best one you wrote. I think it is. Yeah, I, I got to read this one because now you got me intrigued in this again. Thank you. Um, do you I'm know the to get it on the screen and it's like yeah the nightly disease? Do you know the uh, the history behind that book? That that was no, I don't think I I heard you talk about that one yet. So that came out originally with a press called a Dark Fuse uh, Books, ran by a guy named Shane Staley. And at the time, it was like, oh, this is great news, Dark Fuse Press. That's like one of my dream publishing companies to get into. Yeah. It's like, this is great. They put out such good stuff. And then uh, it was a disaster. And six months later, they went bankrupt. And oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I have not had the best uh, history with small presses, which is why I mostly am just like, you know, I'm just going to self-publish books now. Unless, is that why like, you came up with the perpetual motion machine? No, I was doing PMMP long before I decided to put my own shit out. Okay. I had actually vowed and never to put any of my own writing underneath that label because I thought it – at the time, I was like, ah, oh, it's kind of cheap if I publish myself in addition to other people. But uh, time passed, and I gained new experience, and I decided that – I can do a much better job and I won't get ripped off by some of these other companies. So yeah, I, I kind of made a new decision last year, the year before that I'm just going to put out my own stuff unless like I luck out with like a huge, like big five company, which right, right. is, is possible. I assume now that I have this movie and other potential screen ready things happening, but yeah, I began PMMP in 2012, so that was like two years before my debut novel even came out. Nice. Now, you and your wife share the, the editing and slush reading, right? Yeah. She also does all of the uh, interior filmatting, anything that involves Photoshop or finances or <laughs> royalties. Right. I uh, I could not do any bit of math but she's pretty good at math and she's good at photoshop cool i like that one episode you guys did where you talked about going to the shows oh yeah uh, yeah that, i think that was one of your older ones too i think it was episode 10 i don't know how i know that but yeah <laughs> <laughs> i don't even, i don't remember the episode numbers but yeah yeah we uh we we used to do lots of shows which before covid <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm i'm thinking that might pick up again Possibly this autumn, if not next year. I enjoy it, and we we do a decent job sometimes selling books at them. I'm actually thinking about doing my own, like one day. Excuse me, I apologize. One day, uh, uh, like book fest in San Antonio. We were talking about that recently, like renting out a place and like having friends come and do tables and having like a costume context contest since it'll be around Halloween call it something like ghoulish con, but we need to, we need to think about that. some more. I think it would be fun. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. I don't know if it's all the way in Texas. I don't know if I'd be able to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think it would be like a, like a con, like some of the big conventions. Right. Right. It would be more like a, like this is one building in uh, specifically I'm thinking about in San Antonio that we've done events at level festivals. And it's basically a giant open room and it okay. would be like, it would be, it would be more like a, yeah, invite friends to come, but also it's more like 
local people who live nearby, like, oh, let's go check that out. It's just like a huge warehouse, then. It is, yeah. It's pretty cool, though. I, uh, I don't know yet if it would be available, but that's something we've been talking about the past couple days. Just because it was like, man, I miss doing shit, and the places right. we used to do, we're not really doing anything right now. Why don't we do something ourselves? So maybe that might happen. I don't know yet. Yeah. Now, I wanted to ask you a question. I don't know if this is going to be a spoiler for the book or for the movie, but the one scene with the tongue, was that yeah. scene, did you do that in CGI or practical effects? Like how Practical effects. Okay. Completely practical effects. Yeah, I was almost, kind of wondering about that. Almost everything in the, the movie is practical effects, except like uh, in the opening of the movie, there's like a, 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 what do you call it? A drone shot of like, going over the neighborhood as a uh, as storm approaches and like the oh, sky God. is cgi to make it look all spooky and tornado-y and <laughs> evidently uh there was a pain in the ass cgi moment in that same scene because on the street they had like these construction cones and they had to like erase them and oh, I, I was told that was a big pain in the ass to fix <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I could see how that would cause an issue to have to install <laughs> that shit. Um, but yeah, every, mostly everything else is CGI, besides just like cleaning up mistakes. Um, so there's a thing that involves a puppet of a snake. Oh, you used a puppet for that scene? Yeah, puppets. And um, so the CGI in those scenes involved like erasing the, the rods on the puppet. Okay. Yeah. I mean, really, like almost everything is, is as practical effects. The guy we had is Dan Rebuilt, and, and his whole okay. he has a team. He's from LA, but he's been doing practical effects. I mean, I think he began helping out with Tilmanadal 2, man. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, he, he did all the practical effects on uh, James Gunn's movie uh, Slithle. So, I mean, he. he Ooh, he knows that was shit. an old yeah. classic one. Yeah. Yeah. I got to rewatch that one. It's been a while since I've seen that. Me too. I wanted to rewatch it before going down to Michigan because I haven't seen it since it came out. But I right, I, right. I failed. I, I failed. It was like the early two thousands, wasn't it, or late nineties, somewhere. Around. I would say it's between like two thousand and two thousand ten. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, that's a classic one. So you've traveled all over the fucking country, man. How did you like New York City? I loved it. It came out in two thousand six, by the way. I had oh, to okay. Google it. Um, I, I loved it. And I also hated it because I, I'm not used to being around so many people. Yeah, it's a yeah, really it is, crowded yeah. city. Um, yeah. I like I loved it, but I was glad to leave. I was really overwhelmed. But I, I did. What I what I loved the most about it was how close everything was, and how it, you could just walk to anything you wanted to. Yes, every time I go, I just walk everywhere. I, I don't take cabs. or I mean, I rarely take the subway when I go, but it's easy just to walk everywhere. I took the subway twice. I took a cab like from the plane to my hotel. Um, but yeah, I mostly walked. Uh, the day after the premiere, we walked from Brooklyn into Manhattan and like explored Chinatown and all that. It was like a 15 mile walk, but it was great. It's not like Texas. You because when I came home, I I did like a three mile walk. Yeah, and I was dead. I was dying. I was just drenched in sweat. I had to lay it's down. Hot as fuck where you are, man. <laughs> it's so fucking hot. And plus, uh, it's not flat like uh, say Brooklyn is. Really, I didn't know that. Yeah, but I live in what's called the hill country. Oh, okay. <laughs> so there's lots of uh, roads that go up and down. Yeah, it's there's no desert where I'm living. It's uh, yeah, I it's, just assumed yeah. that Texas, most of Texas was like desert country. I, I also did until I moved to Texas. But yeah, I mean, there's no, there's not a desert by me, like unless you drive like eight miles in like one direction. <laughs> it's all. You're originally from the Midwest, is it Indiana? Indiana, Indiana. Oh. The, the tip top of Indiana. It was like oh, a, okay. yeah, it was like a like a half hour train ride to get to downtown Chicago where I lived. So like the Philly tip of Indiana by Lake Michigan. So you're used to that 
that kind of pizza, the, the deep dish pizza there then, huh? <laughs> um, uh, no. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> they didn't really have that in Indiana, despite being so close to Chicago. Really? That's how yeah. I say I it. just assumed it was like, uh, you know, part of that region. like that. State. Maybe it is. Maybe we just didn't go to those places. I don't know. Yeah. So what'd you think of New York City pizza? That oh, was great. I uh, I had it once at a place called Joe's, which is I guess the place to go. I uh, because uh, on the day before the premiere, I stayed with my uh, manager Ryan Lewis, who's also a producer on this movie, and he, he was staying in the village, so I stayed with him, and we went to a place called Joe's, and we just walked around, giant slices of pizza, just looking at things. Did you see Times Square and all that? I did, yeah. When we walked in Manhattan, and we walked up to Times Square, uh, it was great. It was uh, just like how you see in movies. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I saw, I saw these fucking Anvil <laughs> guys. Was that naked guitar guy there, or no? <laughs> nah, he was. He it was his day off today. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but then, like, uh, you see, like, when I got home, I was seeing how like locals will giving text messages like, okay, try to restrain the AC in your apartments to a Brazil of energy. And it's like, have you fuckles been to Times Square? Why don't you shut down some of these giant advertisements? Right. <laughs> I mean, it's so unnecessarily like lit up, even in the daytime. I don't know, man. I would hate what you find shit to do, though, in New York City, you know? So, like, yeah. yeah. And then I, uh, yeah, I have I have nothing to continue that thought. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I I know this is probably going to be a redundant question, but what got you into horror? I don't know. I think just like growing up with Breadwolds who liked the genre and it was always on. So I don't have like a great. Well, you know, my uh, my mom died with a videotape of they live in little hands. And she said, watch this. I just, it was just something that was always on. So I just grew up watching it. And it seems just like, it's not a particular film that you remember seeing that was like the aha moment. The ones that come to mind when I think of like what I watched the most as a young kid was uh, the evil dead trilogy, uh, Dawn of the dead, um, dead alive, Movies like that. I've never also, seen Dead Alive. It's a. It's also called Brain Dead. It's a Peter Jackson. Okay. Peter Jackson's like debut movie. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh my god! Huh. This, this I gotta go check this movie. one out then. Oh, holy fuck, dude! There's like a there's this priest who takes a lawnmower, holds it up, and says, "I kick ass for the world," and just begins slaughtering <laughs> all these zombies. You gotta watch it. There's a okay, zomb- there's a zombie baby in the movie that someone beats the shit out of. It's so great. I think I recall seeing like gifs of that, or like some kind of like, yeah, okay, yeah, definitely gotta check that out then. Yeah. Uh, who who would you say are your writing influences? Joe Lansdale. Joe Lansdale, because he uh, he isn't afraid to be restricted by a genre. He will write any genre he damn well pleases. Right. And he's made a career out of like his writing. He doesn't, to the best of my knowledge, even have an agent. Really? <laughs> he That's just does this shit himself. It's crazy. I remember um, your interview with him, man. I'm surprised he didn't say, fuck this and like <laughs> get pissed. <laughs> I was also surprised. I, the, the only thing I recall from that interview is we did that on Zoom. And it was the only time, it was the first time I've done a, an interview on Zoom because yeah. he kept telling me that Skype wouldn't work with him, which I later okay. found out meant he didn't know how to log into it. <laughs> right. uh, and I kept I kept implying that he had stacks of cash behind him. And he, <laughs> he kept saying, no, I don't. I was like, yeah, you do. <laughs> That's all. That's all I can remember from that. Kind of all the books by him, yeah, yeah. Well, I just want. I just. I just thought it'd be funny to make him uncomfortable by implying he was rich. I don't know. Right. <laughs> but he's so influential in the in the community, and like he's been writing for years now. But he's such a cool guy, though. That's the thing that's like great about him, is that he's kind of humble. He's not like you know, oh, I'm not going to talk to you because I'm Joe R. Lonsdale, you know? Like, yeah. 
He, uh, my very first uh, public reading, I was so nervous, I thought I was going to fucking pass out. It was uh, in Dallas, and he was also doing a reading. So I was like, oh, my God, my, my favorite writer of all time is also going to be reading at my my debut reading. So that was pretty cool. Also, something odd is, like, most, many times throughout the yields, whenever he's, like, selling books at a convention that I'm also selling books at, somehow we get lumped, like, right next to each other. So we, we talk a lot. It's fate. Yeah, it's fate. <laughs> uh, I want him to a- adopt me. <laughs> that would be pretty damn cool, though. Is he listening to this? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Joe, I want to be your son. Adopt me. So now that you 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 quit working at the hotel, how do you find time to write? Like, would, do you I have a know. schedule set up or nope, nope? Because I know there's some people that do like a daily thing. They're like, I've got to write so many words a day for so. Long. I don't know how the hell I wrote when I had the job because right now I'm I'm having no time, no trouble finding time to write than I ever have, and that's mostly because oh I know why it's because once I quit the job, my. Uh, my uh, input and energy into uh, the publishing company really like increase, like because like okay, well this is now how we make money. This com- this company, so I'm putting all, almost all of my time into the uh, publishing company and the writing. Has I love the promotion you did for Todd Kiesling scan lines. Oh, thank you. That, that was, was so fun. fun. That was a really fun promotion. Yeah, I miss the yeah. the like you used to see shit like that on the internet. Like a decade ago, where like people would have like scavenger hunts on websites and like hidden secret yeah, links that you would have though, to find. Yeah, it's fun though, and it engages the community. I, I love it. Yeah, so that's why we. That's what kind of made me think of doing that. Just like how the internet used to be when I was a teenager. Right. It was fun. It was fun. Uh, I made that video in my garage of myself uh, yelling at my TV. Which I filmed that like at 10 p.m. and I'm sure my neighbors had many questions because I, know, I, was, I was just gonna ask. Yeah. <laughs> I had to do it like three times too because I wasn't happy with how like things were lined up. Right. But still, that was a great promotion. I was hoping that somebody was gonna pick up that book because I remember when that came out and they sold out so fast and I was like, oh man, I want a copy of that, but I don't want a Kindle version. I want like a physical copy of that yeah well that's kind of how it happened with me was i found out about the book after it sold out and it sounded like something i would love just because i love like spooky technology stuff right so i asked him to read a copy to consider for reprinting i mostly just wanted to read it now was it re-edited by you or just like yeah i went through it again it was it was mostly polished and clean but i had him uh add a few things that i thought would benefit like what the only like main scene i can think of that was n- completely new is uh the kid he built at like a uh a, a wall mill or a cane mill or something like that and i thought it would be cool if uh the ghost that's plaguing plaguing them if he showed up on like the wall of tvs so he added that scene that was my main. Yeah, but yeah. Well, cool. you've been spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'll forget about that. Like, I still got to read his Devil's Creek, man. Um, I read his short story that was in the the Midnight in the Cemetery. Yeah, I have Devil's Creek, but I haven't read it yet. It sounds great. Yeah, it does. He the the short story is uh, it's a tie-in. Mm. I would I would have mentioned that in my review of the short story collection, but there's a tie-in to Devil's Creek with that. Okay. So it's it sounds it sounds like it's gonna I, that hyped me for wanting to read Devil's Creek, but it's so big, it's intimidating because it's so big, you know. That's yeah, that's said. that's. <laughs> no, she didn't, she didn't say that. <laughs> she said, "Will is it?" <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All Did right. you ever watch the show uh, called Documental? No, it's a Japanese show on Amazon. It's fucking crazy. We, we we recently discovered it, and talking about penises made me think of it. Now, it's um. Is this going to lead to edging? <laughs> no, it's uh, <laughs> basically I bring in an edge pizza box and be like, "Does this make you think of anything?" <laughs> I would have said no comment. 
<laughs> so they take uh, like 10 comedians and they lock them in the room for a specific amount of time. And the, the last one not to laugh wins money. So they can do anything they want to make someone else laugh. In the last episode I was watching, this guy, he, uh, he took out his, uh, his, his penis and he took like a little toy and he like put it inside of his shaft. Like, and then he just like flexed and it popped out. It was oh, amazing. Man. I don't think I could do that. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> uh, infections. <laughs> right. I, mean, I just wanted to recommend that show. It's pretty good. Is this on uh, American Netflix? I mean, no, it's on Prime. Prime. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Prime usually has a lot of different stuff. They have some. They have an odd selection of shows. They kind of recommend me weird stuff, and it's like I don't know if they're like. I don't know if it's as accurate as other streaming services. Yeah. I my bet, my favorite uh, streaming syllabus is my living room. All my just like DVDs. DVD yeah, 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 yeah. Buy physical media if you feel it's too late. Right, right. I don't know if I have the room for. I got so many books. I don't know if I'd have room for. Uh... Just buy a new house. <laughs> Yeah, it's oh, easy. Yeah, good. It's easy. Okay. So are there any other books you've written that you would like to see adapted into movies? Like, I thought that um, your werewolf novel, I thought I heard rumor that maybe that one was supposed to be adapted. Uh, potentially. Nothing I can say about it at this time. Oh, so it still might be option then, you're saying? I mean, anything could become a movie someday. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I will say uh, last night I received some pretty good news that I can't talk about. That a book oh, of mine. You got to tease us. A book of mine last night was just sold to a pretty big TV company. Can so, you say which book? Or? No. I cannot. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Will you be but, announcing it sometime or? Probably not anytime soon because negotiations still need to go on and contracts need to be signed. But we we, we received the uh, we want to buy this book email, right? So now we head into a good direction of finalizing things. But yeah, I can't say what book. Okay, but it's a book we've talked about during this interview. Uh, okay, okay. I'll say, I'll say I that. think I have a feeling which one it is, and it's not the disease one. <laughs> the other one <laughs> the disease one <laughs> it's funny I uh, I met my manager's uh, wife in the, when we were doing Tribeca and she was talking to me about my books but she couldn't remember any of the titles so like she called we need to do something the bathroom one and she called <laughs> she called touch the night the mom's book which I thought the was mom's really book fun. yeah I, lo I love that <laughs> Because, well, that's uh, cool that they they read them though. Yeah. I'd be so like like nervous about like you know letting anyone I know that are used to work with me, in, you know, in some capacity. Like, well, I mean, my 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 film and TV manager. Oh, okay. I thought you were yeah, saying yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I know I you mean, said you left a copy. Didn't you leave a copy of the Nightly Disease at your hotel job? Yeah, that's how I quit. It, I signed yeah. it to my boss, yeah. and I said I'm checking out. <laughs> <laughs> you know if they read it? I uh, I don't know if she read it, but I know other people have read it who built at my hotel because okay. a question I began to get after putting the book out was so in the book the uh the nail radle he often uh masturbates on the roof of the hotel. Yeah, I remember that. And uh there. so I was asked about that a lot. <laughs> By co vocals and my assistant yeah, manager. Yeah. <laughs> and my answer was always, yeah. <laughs> You're like, now we know what you did when you worked here. <laughs> I feel like if you were going to ask me that, the, uh, if I said no, it would be disappointing. So I just have to say, yeah. Well, you yep. could have just left the mystery and been like, you'll never know. I mean, nah. Yep. <laughs> it was me. And I did it. <laughs> <laughs> It was like the the JFK assassination. <laughs> it was from the rooftop. Oh no, that was the second shootle. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> oh, where were you at this time and day? I was on the riff jacking off. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right, let's go on with the next question here. So do you, you don't you don't have any upcoming books coming out besides the ones that are already out? Like, is there anything? The one, you- ones I've written, no, I have nothing planned. I'm re-releasing three of my old books next year, and they Ooh. all they all available to pre-order now on the the Perpetual Publishing website. I'm <laughs> re-releasing uh, Toxicity, which was my debut novel. Uh, the Mine is a Razor Blade, which was my second book, and also a book called How to Successfully Kidnap Strangers. And those three came out from three different small presses over the yields. I got the rights back to them. I'm putting them out myself, because why not? Okay, yeah, definitely, definitely piqued my interest. Can you tell us a little bit about each one of those? Like, Yeah, I apologize. Uh, I'm still not, like caffeinated enough uh yeah i I don't usually do early morning um live streams and like i wasn't sure i'm like are people even going to want to get up to watch this this early it's on youtube so i mean they can can yeah yeah they can watch it whenever yeah toxicity is a crime novel about a dysfunctional family that wins the lotto and they become uh crazy rich savages and uh, mean, meanwhile, there's like a, a new drug hitting the streets that turns people into um, killing lunatics. So and sort also, of like the crazies? K- kind of, but not really. It's more like it just ruins your life and then you might kill somebody, maybe. Um, and also there's like a, there's a guy who's released from prison. He gets stuck having to like do some crimes. It's been a while since I've talked or really thought about that book. I am terrified. It's not good. It's, I'm going to, I'm going to be going through it sometime this year to re-edit it like the other two okay. books. I'm going to give them a, a brief edit. I'm, I don't think I'll change anything plot wise, even if I want to, but I'll, I'll clean up some of the uh, sloppy uh, sentences and typos. Um, the mine is a razor blade. It's kind of like a Dark City. You will see that movie? Yes. Yeah, so that's the closest like comparison. It's about a guy who wakes up in a like next to a lake. Uh, no memory of who he is, but there's like dead cops around him. Okay. And the city he finds himself in is really strange. Homeless people like just walk down the street constantly. Meaning it's not like you can't even drive down it. It, the city is so fucked that people just like walk level up and down the street without any purpose okay. in life at all. And there's this crazy like dude who runs a casino who like owns the city and it's the, the, the nail radle trying to figure out who the fuck he is. And are there what? any talking babies and garbage cans in this one? <laughs> Um, no. You probably don't remember that reference, do you? (laughs) I'm trying to think. Tell me. I was in one of your pockets. I don't even remember. Who the hell were you talking to in that one? But you guys were talking and you were like, oh, I should write a scene with a baby, talking baby on a garbage can. I can't remember who the hell you were talking to. (laughs) I have no idea. (laughs) But it was hilarious, though. It was like you you even did a voice for it, I think. Oh, my God. (laughs) I have no idea. (laughs) See that's maybe that I'm, was an obscure reference. I probably shouldn't have mentioned. Like, maybe I'll maybe I'll add a baby. There's a baby in the book, but she doesn't say much besides like dad. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if there's any trash cans in that book. I'll have to, I have to look. God, um, now I remember. I should have remembered which episode that was. <laughs> this it's beginning to sound familial. Was I describing a dream I had? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, it was yeah. a dream. The yes. Now you see. Yes, you. Yeah. Brought it back. I don't know who I was talking to at the time. Now, um, the other book, uh, "How to Successfully Kidnap Strange Adults," it's a, uh, it's mostly just making fun of the small press scene. It's about okay. a, it's about an indie press. They publish like bizarro stuff, and one of the uh, one of the authors, they get a really bad review from this dickhead who has a blog. Yeah. Well, he just trashes books, and the guy. Uh, he, sort of like he, that guy that did the. 
the review of Touch the Night. Uh, we'll uh, about that. I uh, saw that. I was like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> so he sees this uh, review, and he's also high on meth, Theophil. So he kind of okay. overreacts, and uh, he kidnaps the uh, review. Sort of like Philip K. Dick. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so it's basically like this wacky comedy about this small press who has now uh, kidnapped a book review and things just get wills and wills from there. So Puts those the lotion three. in the basket kind of stuff? Or? It, it doesn't get that extreme. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so there's no tucking and dancing? <laughs> Not to my knowledge, but it's possible. <laughs> Not to my knowledge. <laughs> Oh man! So are you, I don't. Is there going to be any new more episodes of Castle Rock Radio? Nah, we 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 called it quits on that one. Oh yeah, we uh, we we deleted the show from the. It might still be available to download, but we like we we canceled all like what we were paying every month. Yeah, so it's done. Uh, it just became too difficult. Uh, because uh, Lily Michelle, she has like a job now. Yeah, and I love the dichotomy though of you guys like chatting about books though. Yeah, we might do some stuff similar on maybe the Ghoulish channel, but like uh, yeah, if the she way could come back as a co-host, I, I thought I love the way you guys interact together when you're talking about books. So, oh, thank that you. That was one of the reasons why I tuned in for Castle Rock. Yeah, we have a we have a good chemistry. Maybe that's why we live together. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, the reason we stopped was it was just uh, the scheduling was awful. Like she built in the evenings, which is when we would usually oh. recalled. And uh, also, it, I kind of got sick of reading Stephen King with the intent of trying to find what was bad about it. Because like most the show was mostly us walking through the plot and pointing out what was ridiculous about the stories right. and it kind of ruined me on Stephen King for a while and I just I don't know I just kind of got sick of it right for a lot of research too for each episode yeah because I remember when you guys uh, the last ones I listened to were the the stand ones and like Man, that, that book sucks book. yeah I the, I don't know if it was because of the podcast if I would have enjoyed it more, like just reading for my pleasure, but I did not like that book at all. And it was just, I couldn't get through it. Was that your first time reading it? Yeah. Really, man. I love that book. I read it uh, when I was a teenager back in the nineties. I think it's because of the podcast. I didn't like it yeah. because I would have to read the chapter and take notes. And right. it's a difficult book to, to stop and take notes on. But yeah, the stand was the one that <laughs> killed the podcast. We couldn't finish it. Yeah, because like, I was going to say, I thought I didn't see any more episodes nope. after that. Yeah, we stopped like midway through. It's like, we'll never look in a, like the last update was like six months ago. Why don't we just stop? Just call it quits. Who will we, who will we lie into? Right. <laughs> oh, well, I hope you bring your wife back for some episodes of Ghoulish. Because I, yeah. I love the dichotomy of you guys like talking about books. I, I think I'm. I think we're going to rekill one in the next couple of days, actually, to, for episode 101, because episode 100, I died and I was reanimated. And I think 101 will be uh, me like going through who I think killed me and why. Did you get any messages from people when that first came out saying, like, did he really die? Like, no. Oh, okay. Probably because I was promoting it. I know, but it would have been funny though if somebody would have been like, "He's really dead," you know. Like, I was thinking how funny it would have been if I had actually died that day. Like, what a great prank! Right? Like, no, he's not dead. He's really dead. <laughs> did, did he plan this? I feel like Max Booth the Third sightings. <laughs> so like Elvis. Oh, yeah. well, like Bigfoot, no like. <laughs> it's me in the woods, but you can't really see me too well. <laughs> So what? What's the? Is it radically different living from the Midwest to Texas? Like, is there a culture shock? Or yeah, I'm trying to think now. I've uh, in September it will be ten years since I moved to Texas. So I don't know what the difference is. I mean, both states are really Republican. Yeah, I live yeah. in a, a county that's like that. It's like yeah. A county. So I've never lived like in a blue area. So yeah. that's the same, but um, 
people are more polite in Texas, I think, than Indiana. There's a lot of that Southern hospitality. Um, right. The food is much better. Oh, I can so, imagine. You probably got barbecue everywhere, right? Barbecue, yeah. Uh, the Mexican, the Mexican food, though, man, is right insane. Like, I like, hated Mexican food when I lived in Indiana because it was just like Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah, Taco Bell. Yeah, it does not. But uh, yeah, and I mean, in Texas, you have all these different like local restaurants, these hole in the wall, these hole in the wall places, and it's great. Uh, which is you know good, but also till if I fill my body. <laughs> Do they have any German restaurants? Like German? Not that, I, not that I know of, but it's, it's possible. I'm not like... The one thing I always say that when I was looking at the hotel is I would get someone who would come up and go like, hey, what's good to eat around here? <laughs> Something like that. I always wanted to say, I'm not fucking Google. You have a phone. <laughs> Look it up. Leave me alone. <laughs> like I was, at a, I was having coffee with a friend last week and we decided to go get some lunch. And the friend was like, I'm going to go ask the, the the coffee pill Sam what's good either around here. And I said, don't do that. You have a cell phone. Leave them right, alone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes it's best to ask the locals, though, because, you you know, Google might not, you know, yeah. have that, you know, this is what's legit the best food in town versus what's being like, you know, publicized as yeah. food in town. That's a, that's a valid point. It's a valid yeah. point. Cause I can think of that. Like a lot of people like Google might represent the chains or franchises. Whereas, yeah. you know, someone knows of this little hole in the wall place. That's got great food. What I typically do is I go to like the map section on my phone. I just type in food <laughs> and see what comes up. <laughs> So, yeah, a lot of what I know about Texas, I learned from reading uh, biographies of Robert E. Howard. I don't oh, know if yeah. you've ever read him or not. No. I'm I still haven't. working on his massive collection of stuff. Is that, that the Conan of... guy? Yes. Okay, I haven't read anything of his. Oh, you haven't? Oh, it's so good. If you're into Pulp Fiction, um, he wrote a lot of horror fantasy stuff, too. Like, he did uh, Lovecraft's Mythos, too. Okay. And uh, Solomon Kane, which is his Puritan kind of character. I should get to him. Um, I've been interested in reading some of his Conan stuff. I uh, recently uh, milled on the uh, series of Indiana Jones movies, so I'm like, yeah, I want to, I want to read some eventual shit now. <laughs> yeah, I want to, I want to go back and uh, rewatch some of those films. Yeah, Harrison Ford, man. Uh, I. We got the uh, the Phil K restoration box set. Well, I got oh, my, nice. I got it for my uh, my wife will uh, he'll fill today, and uh, mostly because I also wanted to see him. And um, yeah, we watched them all like in two days. I had seen the Phil three when I was young, but I hadn't really revisited them. They right. seemed more like ah, those old movies my dad likes. I don't really give a shit. But uh, yeah, I, I love them, and I. Uh, I hadn't seen Crystal Skull at all until this weekend, and I loved it. I thought it was like the second best of the series, oh, <laughs> which I know is a controversial opinion. Yeah, I haven't seen anything in 4K yet. I probably yeah. should break down. I mean, it looks and sounds it, great. Does it? Yeah. yeah. I got to break down and get a new a new flat screen. I should probably do 4K. Yeah. Okay. 5K. Um, so we know you watch horror films. Um, okay, what books would you recommend that are not written by you? Like one that's not horror and then some that are horror. Okay. <clears throat> I would recommend Negative Space by B.L. Yeagle. That came out, uh, I think, last year. It's about a town uh, that is trying to cope with a suicide epidemic. <clears throat> it's one of the best indie published books I've read in Yields. I mean, it's really, really good. I'm going to add this one to my... Yeah, Negative okay. Space. It's so fucking good. And then a book that isn't in that genre? Um, I'm trying to think of something. Um. I'm gonna do some typing real fast to see what okay. I've read. To see what I've read this year, I'm gonna look at my uh, my Goodreads because my memory is not great. Um, ba, 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 ba. 
Um, let's see. Let's see. What have I read? Oh, yeah. You gave that one five stars. Yeah. Okay. I would recommend The Night Always Comes by Willie Vlautin. V-L-A-U-T-I-N. The, the book is The Night Always Comes. And it's a crime novel that I love. It's about this uh, this woman who needs to come up with some money so she can uh, buy a house because she lives with little mom and little disabled brittle. And, I mean, she spends little days waitressing and, uh, and uh, doing sex work on the side. And it's really intense. It takes place on one night. It's really thrilling. It, I, it just I read came it. out in April, it says. Yeah, it just came out. I read it in one sitting. I was blown away. So it was it's that like, good, huh? Yeah, it's really fucking. It's really fast paced. You, you, it's a t- type of book you pick up and you don't want to do anything else until it's finished. So yeah, the night right. always uh, comes, which sounds like a title I would come up with in a podcast. Right. Oh, right. We've reached the hour mark. I don't know. I mean, I was kind of hoping there would be some people here to ask questions while we were while we were doing this. That's okay. But I would love to have you on again in the future if we could do that. I know you said yeah. you're going to have a new edition of uh, – We need to do something, so. yeah. That's – um. I don't know yet when I'm going to announce it, but I'm hoping sometime next month. Oops, was I not supposed to mention that? <laughs> no, it's fine. Okay. Um, I'm just waiting on uh, IFC to give me approval on a few things I want to do in it, like some images I want to include in the book. I'm going to be doing a paperback re-release with an intro, and I'm going to be doing a limited edition Hell to Kevil, which will have, hopefully, like the screenplay in, in it, and it's going to have, hopefully, like images from the movie, stuff like that. And something else I'm going to include is uh, when I left Michigan, I, I dumpster dived at the set and I stole like two s- pieces of the wall from the movie. Yes, I remember hearing that. In the, so the last episode of Ghoulish. I'm going to like take it apart and include sections of the wall with the limited edition. <laughs> nice. Is that going to so, be through Cemetery Dance? or No, I'm just doing it. Okay. Yeah, because why not? I, I thought about hitting up someone else, and I thought, well, I, I run a publishing company. Why don't I just do it? And I'll, and I'll profit mill. I'll profit right, right. all of it. I'll take all the profits. So, Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> so I'll be doing it. But I'm just waiting on approval on some of the things I mentioned because they have to give it to me before I can advertise it. Right. Yeah, that's it's got to be like kind of frustrating at times to try to be like going at the pace of uh, – yeah. yeah, I don't know. I think I was spoiled with this movie because some most movies take yields and yields to get made. And I, we first talked to Sean O'Grady in July 2020 about potentially making the movie, right. and then we were making it in October, and then it fucking premiered at Tribeca in June, less than a year later. And now it's coming out in September. So like this is yeah, I mean, fastest it's- any movies ever been made and put out. <laughs> Right now that you say, because I remember, I remember when you first announced it. And now it doesn't seem like it was that long ago. You're right. Yeah, it's all, uh, it's all really quickly. And now, like when things take long, I'm like, what's going on? We should have made the movie by now. Right. But right. I think I just got lucky on that, on that one. Did you have a say in who, um, who you picked for actors, actor? Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. I, uh, uh, Sahila McCulmick, who plays Melissa, is was actually my idea. Yeah, I saw uh, how she did in the movie called The Vast of Night. Did you see that? No, I haven't. So, yeah, she's in The Vast of Night, and I loved it. And I made the the other producers watch it, so they would also, like, right. agree with me. And they did. And she was the first person we reached out to, and she said, yeah. Cool. And everybody else, I mean, we we came up with lists of ideas of who could be who. Um, the boy, uh, who John James Cronin, who plays Bobby, uh, basically we watched like hundreds of auditions from little kids <laughs> and he was the best one. Six. Now, was that character based on like anybody like, um, like a little bit based on my stepson. Yeah. I, I kind of thought so. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, I mean, in, in the book and the movie, there's a thing where they uh, tease him by calling him a tiny old man. Yeah. And that's something that <laughs> we do in real life that he despises. 
And we and we call him that because he is a tiny old man. Like <laughs> one time I took him to the hotel with me to pick up my paycheck and I turned around and he's on the lobby couch with a newspaper, just like <laughs> <laughs> he's always he's always grumpy and bitching like an old man too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have heard of like some little kids that are like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like you'd be like, I think the weather is going to <laughs> He's obsessed with the weather, man. He's constantly <laughs> checking it. Um hence his fascination with chillnadoes, which led to some of the inspiration with this book and movie. Call it next year yeah. in the morning with a cup of coffee in the paper. <laughs> uh, but like in the book and the movie, it's old in the beginning, those like the dad is asking, like, "What the hell is an EF five? And right. the what the kid explains is verbatim to what he told me because he was standing next to me when I was writing that scene, and I told him to explain what an EF five is, and I just translated what he told me. <laughs> nice, yeah. It's like when two tornadoes come together, they make one big tornado. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you actually experienced like severe like weather since you've lived there? I mean, oh, it's it, we've had many times where we had to go like into the bathroom and wait it out, but nothing awful. Like the most damage we've gotten is a fence fell down. Because I know we get tornado warnings here in New York, but yeah, nothing like out the rest of the country. Like I mean, the sky will turn yellow and we'll get a little bit of rain and wind, but nothing severe here. Yeah. It's mostly like false alarms, just like heavy winds and lots of rain and thunder and lightning. But we, we haven't gotten like an actual tornado sweeping through town. Right. Well, I'd like to thank you for, for coming and talking with me. This it's been Absolutely. a fun day. Yeah. I'd love, you. I'd love to have you on again, and now we've just finally got two viewers show up before we're getting oh. right out of here. Like, Hello, oh, folks. Finally. <laughs> Thank you for showing up. <laughs> but like you said, you know, YouTube, it's it's here yeah. for posterity's sake. Um yes, I'd love to I'd love to have you back for for another interview. No problem at all. I'm I'm game. I, I asked Eric Smith if he would uh want to sit in. I don't know if you remember. He did an interview with you. God. Yes, yes. Yeah. I, I blanked on the name for a second. I don't know why, but yeah, I know him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I asked him if he'd want to pop in and like sit in with us to you know do a duo because I I've been trying to do like guest guest uh, interviewers too. Mm -hmm. But yeah. What, what do you say? No. He said he's doing his own thing, which I was kind of disappointed to hear that. Wow. I, wow. I really want to work with him on some things because wow. like, the same interests and books and stuff like that. Pretty interesting. Now, him and I had a falling out, actually, so that's why he said no. Really? Yeah. Are you joking or are you serious? I am 100% serious. I, uh, what happened? <laughs> no, I was going to make up some, make something okay. up. No, he's, he's <laughs> <laughs> it was like, damn it, Max! <laughs> it was an editing incident on the top of the hotel. <laughs> yeah, that was it. <laughs> edge too far. <laughs> that could be the the sequel to the the nightly disease. The edge too far. Yeah, we'll uh, watch professional wrestling. There was a guy named Edge. Really? Yeah. His name was Edge. I didn't know that. He wrestled. He was blonde. That's all, I, that's all I know about him. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you again for coming. Yeah. And till next time, folks, we're ending now.